Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today, we're discussing the Grand Seiko Spring Drive GMT SBGE027. You can see and you can purchase this stainless steel spring drive dual time on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the cards in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this and our entire collection of Grand Seiko watches with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this Grand Seiko GMT SBGE 027. Now, the watch on my wrist wears delightfully compact. Now, it's not a small watch by any means. 40 millimeters is a good standard contemporary size for a men's timepiece, but I will say that 48.3 millimeters lug to lug with generously tapered lugs means that you can wear this watch on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters, maybe even 13 and a half centimeters in circumference with consummate at ease. It's a little bit thick perhaps, or at least it appears so until you realize that it only measures 14.4 millimeters thick with a generously sloped conical bezel and a domed box section sapphire so it easily slides underneath a jacket cuff and possibly even some sweaters and dress sleeves. Now the watch has a planted comfortable feel on the wrist with a regularly shaped case back that leaves no pressure points or hot spots. And again, looking at the watch from directly overhead on my wrist, you can see I have plenty of clear on the side, so I could wear this watch on a much smaller wrist. Part of the ergonomic equation is the fact that the strap is unconstrained and can easily be pulled down. So there's no question about whether or not you're going to have virtual flare. There is none. The strap is wonderfully comfortable. It's a semi-gloss small alligator leather. You can see small scale alligator leather with a monotone stitch, folded edges. It is slightly bolstered, but it's very flexible and supple. Calf skin on the underside. The deployant clasp is a rather involved affair. It's actually pretty cool because it features a minder loop in finished steel as part of its structure. Otherwise, you get all the security of a folding clasp, so you won't drop while dunning or removing at bed side, but you also get the security of a twin trigger release, so you have to positively disengage it to pop it open. This is anything but a standard design. Grand Seiko designed this clasp expressly for its watches. Now you'll note that the case is simple but nicely executed. For traditionalists, you have pinholes on the flanks, so with a simple strap tool you can immediately pop the strap and swap the strap. The watch features a handsome combination of satin finish, minimal on the lug hoods, and polish, and that's the majority of the case and lug flanks. You'll also note that there's a little bit of a curved step between the lug and the case band. That accentuates the curvature of the case rather than looking squared off and direct. It looks a little bit more sensuous, arced, and graceful. You'll also note a little styling trick that Zenith has also used in the past, which is to slightly countersink the bezel below the plane of the lugs so you can have full-figured arching lugs that have a wonderful loft and span to them, while at the same time keeping the bezel relatively planted down to the case band to keep the watch reasonably thin. You also note that the watch has a dramatically domed box section sapphire that creates a little bit of the off-axis distortion of a vintage plexi. The dial is the highlight of the watch, the dial with the engineering co-equally. You can see that it is an anthracite sunburst, so it has a wonderful luster that explodes in direct light. It's even glowing with a notable dynamism in the soft light of my light box. Now the hands and the beautiful faceted polished and satin finished indices, both of them, hands and indices, feature both faceting with polish and satin finished top horizontal planes. It, is as good as anything you will see from the likes of Rolex or Omega. Grand Seiko dials with an emphasis on the hands, the dial texture and depth, and the three-dimensional multi-finished indices really set Grand Seiko apart. Now you can see this one pre-2017 because the Seiko script is at 12 o'clock. The quality is exactly the same. I want to call attention to a few quirky features including the off-centered power reserve indicator. You can actually see as I wind the watch the power reserve indicator at 7 o'clock traces its full arc from red to white from beginning to end. 72 hour power reserve. You'll also note that the watch features a 
time zone functionality so you can actually change your locality as you travel driving the date forward or backwards with no hazard to the movement as you might travel forward or backwards across the international date line and you note the watch continues to tick continues to keep time and your reference time zone does not change as you make this adjustment now you pull the crown out fully and now it features hacking or stop seconds it is a 24 hour second time zone hand as you can see the calibrations of 24 hours in between the individual hour indices the watch has 100 meter water resistance which makes it quite versatile throw it on a textile or a rubber strap and it could be your adventure watch for travels to far-flung exotic locales it does have a display case back it does have a spring drive caliber and both of these things are wonderful you can see caliber 9r66a 72 hour power reserve, automatic winding, spring drive. So we already talked about the functionality of the GMT, the hacking seconds and the date. Let's talk a little bit about spring drive. This is a system that was under development by Seiko and took the better part of the late 70s, all of the 80s and all of the 90s to perfect. Automatic winding wasn't introduced until the mid 2000s, but spring drive turns the action of the rotor or the winding wheel into energy in a spring. The spring energy then propels a conventional mechanical drivetrain that turns a regulating wheel. The regulating wheel creates an induced current that activates a quartz oscillator, which in turn creates a back EMF, to which is an electromagnetic force to slow down the regulating wheel and keep it turning in one direction at a speed that precisely regulates the passage of seconds, minutes, and hours, which is why spring drive features the only completely smooth sweep of a seconds hand. Yes, Piaget has made noises about trying to emulate this, but until they serialize it in a model line as opposed to one special model, one time, Grand Seiko and Seiko own this technology first and best with spring drive. Now, not only does it give you that smooth sweep and the Romantic knowledge that your watch is powered by mechanical spring energy rather than batteries. There are no batteries here. There are no capacitors. But it also gives you phenomenal accuracy thanks to that quartz oscillator. So you have a watchmaker built and regulated movement that is also powered by a spring, mechanically constructed for the most part, and able to keep tolerances of plus or minus 15 seconds per month. Remember, a COSC Swiss chronometer is allowed to lose four or gain six every 24 hours. Spring drive beats the pants off of that, a signature of Seiko and Grand Seiko. This watch, from the dial to the case back, is all Japanese, proudly so, and distinctively different. Think differently, keep time differently, and Give Grand Seiko serious consideration if you're effectively beat up, inured, and worn down with Omegas, Breitlings, and Rolex. This is a watch nerd brand for dyed-in-the-wool watch guys. You'll love the community online, the fraternity in person, and the cult-like following that these watches have in the United States, Western Europe, and of course their homeland. See this one and own it on our website.